If you're looking to buy a home and you can't decide whether you want to do a 15 or a 30 year loan, this is the place for you. Or if you're a real estate agent who wants to learn more about the differences between 15 and 30 year loans, just to be educated, to be able to best talk to your clients, this is also the place for you. So I'm Joe Harris. This is keeping your business and your finances on track. And I'm here with Nick Morgan. How are you doing, Nick? I'm doing great, Joe. How are you? I'm awesome. <music> This is like an age old discussion, 15 versus 30 year loans. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, you know, it's basically how, how fast you're paying off your debt right. and the amortization on that, on that loan. We're going to probably bring up some things that people haven't thought about in the discussion of 15 and 30 years, because mm -hmm. it's not just as simple as the way you pay off your loan and, and what it costs. There's mm -hmm. some more variables in there that we're going to get into. Right. For sure. So amortization, amortization is is how you is the the payments and the schedule of payments in which you pay off your loan mm -hmm. and it's really in the case of a, of a mortgage whether it be a 15 or a 30 year it's going to have two real components principal portion of your payment and the interest portion of your payment so mm -hmm. the principal and interest is what we're talking about today gotcha gotcha and now comparing the 30 year and 15 year which one is more common which one's like the typical loan that you get we see 30 year fixed rate mortgages constantly okay uh, you know right now uh, and this is historically speaking, there's typically a spread. When I say a spread, there's a difference between the rate on a 30 year and a rate on a 15 year. The rate on mm -hmm. a 15 year is typically lower than that of a 30 year. Mm -hmm. There are times when you've heard the term, you may have heard the term inverse yield curve. We're not going to get too deep into the mechanics of that, but basically mm -hmm. it means that the, the shorter term rates are higher than the longer term rates. And that's not very common. Mm -hmm. Okay. So typically 30 years are higher than the 15 year on the rate. Okay. And we, and we see the 30 year more. We see the 30 year a lot more. Now, in terms of the payment plan on a typical 30 year loan, okay. how does that work? How does the interest in payment, uh, int sorry, interest in principal payments work from the beginning into the loan to the end? Okay. So typically on a 30 year fixed rate mortgage, it's been called the, it's been called an interest front loaded loan, mm. which means your first payment is almost all interest and very little principal, mm -hmm. whereas your last payment is almost all principal and very little interest. Mm. And as you go, you start to pay more and more principal down per payment than interest until you're paying almost all principal and no interest. Right, right. And now if you could compare year one to let's say year 39, sorry, 29, excuse me, what are those percentages looking like? Well, in, in year one, 87% of your payment is going towards interest, 87%. Mm. Whereas year 29, only 18% is going towards interest and the remaining 82% yeah. is going towards principal. So mm -hmm. big shift in there. Mm -hmm. And then just out of curiosity, what's the tipping point for a 30-year loan for when that principal and interest start to equal each other? Okay, so at your 242nd payment, which is actually 20 years and two months in, mm -hmm. you flip from a um, paying more interest than principal mm -hmm. to paying more principal than interest at that payment. Right, so that back third is you know rapidly just paying yeah. equity into your That home. last 10 years, you pay off equity extraordinarily faster mm -hmm. than the first 20. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, sweet. And now like we discussed in the intro, we talked about the 30-year loan a little bit. Now, right. how does that compare to the 15-year? Now, what are some of the differences? What are some of the you know, pros or cons? Well, let's talk about a payment. Let's sure. just pretend for this argument that that we're looking at a three hundred thousand dollar loan. Mm -hmm. Let's just pretend, and I know there's going to be people in there that say this is this. That's just not the case, Joe. But let's just pretend the interest rate's the same on both of them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if this payments, if the interest rate's the same on both of them, your principal and interest payment on the thirty year is about nineteen hundred ninety six dollars. The interest. And principal and interest payment on the 15-year loan mm -hmm. is $2,696. And, and that's for, I just want to clarify, that's for a $300,000 $300, loan. $300,000 loan at 7%. 7%. Not our interest rate. I'm not quoting rates. I just did that for demonstration purposes. Right. But the seven, so the, the payment's about $700 difference on these two loans. Mm -hmm. All right. And so that's one of the big um, advantages of a 30-year fixed rate loan is mm -hmm. that the payment is going to be a little bit lower because you're taking more time to pay off the loan. Mm -hmm. The 15 year loan, the payment's a little bit more, but you pay it off in half the time. Right. But you pay a lot less than half interest. Mm -hmm. Okay. So people think, oh, it's, it's, you know, 15 versus 30. I'm only going to pay, I'm going to pay double the interest on a 15 or I'm sorry, on a 30 year than I would on a 15 year. Mm -hmm. And it's actually not true. The interest difference, you know, that you pay is about $233,000 between a 15 and a 30. 
And the way that breaks out is on a 15-year loan, you're paying 185000 and change mm-hmm. on interest. And on a 30-year loan of that amount, you're paying $418,526. So more than double the interest on a 30-year loan. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's you know a huge difference and huge definitely difference. Something, something to consider. Now, another thing to consider that we wanted to talk about is that $700 monthly saving that you're um, saving on the total payment. What is something that you could do with the money? And, and if you invested that money, what would that look like? Well, let's just pretend that that $700 a month that you're saving by doing a 30 year versus a 15. Let's just say you take that money and every month you put $700 into the S&P 500. Mm-hmm. Okay. Historically speaking, the S&P over time has averaged 8% yep. a year. Now, sure. some years it's 20% and some years it's negative, right? right? But it's average is 8% and that's been going on a long time. Yeah. Can't promise that's going to continue. I don't say Joe told me to put all my money in the S&P. Mm-hmm. That's not what I did here. I'm just giving you an example. And so if you had done that, let's say you put $700 in the S&P 500 and it matured at a rate of 8% per year, over that 30 years, you will have saved 1,000 or your investment will be worth, I'm sorry, $1,043,252. Mm. Over a million dollars, that's 700 a month for 30 years at, the, at 8% a year on the S&P 500. Wow. And so when people say, well, you're going to pay $233,000 more on a 30-year loan, had you taken that $700 a month and reinvested it mm-hmm. properly at 8% and you got 8% a year, you have grossly exceeded that 233000 Right, yeah. So the flexibility that the 30-year gives you over the 15 is important if you have the discipline to do something with that with that difference. Exactly, yeah. If you go out and buy depreciating assets mm-hmm. like cars, boats, RVs, all the fun stuff that I personally love, yeah. instead of investing that, you're going to spend money versus invest it and make it. Yeah, yeah. So just – Basically, more financial flexibility with that longer period with, of time. With the 30-year loan, you certainly have more financial flexibility because you have lower monthly payments. Right. That's a big pro of the 30-year. You're going to have lower monthly payments. Mm-hmm. You know, you have more investment opportunity with that difference in payment if you're disciplined, you know, and you make good investments, which can be tough yes. sometimes. <laughs> yes. Um, and you have a little bit more financial flexibility. Mm-hmm. And then what are some of the cons of that 30-year? We touched on it a little bit, but like if well, you were... Yeah, you know, writing out a list. Sure. You want to consider. The, one of the biggest cons is that the more interest is paid over time. Mm-hmm. Like if you're just looking at pure interest paid, you're going to pay more interest over mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. You know, you have slower equity buildup. In the beginning, you're not building equity as fast. You mm-hmm. know, you go five years into a 15-year loan, you've built up a serious amount of equity, whereas it's a slow build on that third year. Right. You know, it's going to yeah. be a fraction of what it would be on the 15-year. Yeah. And, oh, and, you know, it's just going to make for a higher overall cost of the home. Right. Exactly. All right, cool. And then the last question I had is, what would you recommend? Who who um, is better for what? You know, what situation is best for which loan? You know, every situation we see is just so different. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously you can categorize them and group them together, mm-hmm. but we got to look at how long am I going to be in the home? If you're going to be in the loan home a long time, you know, I, I believe in paying homes off. You know, it, if you, it's tough to be in a home for thirty years these yeah. days especially a growing family, you buy a bigger home. Shrinking family, you sell that home and buy a smaller home. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to be in the home long term, it's really going to depend on your discipline. You know, if you're going to go with a 30-year fixed rate because you want extra money to, to invest, well, just make sure you invest that money. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to go to a 15-year fixed rate because you want to pay it off faster, well, just know that, you, that you're going to lose that, seven hundred. in this case, $700 of flexibility. Right. And if you're set up and, and you're, you're buying below your means and you have, you have other monies you can save, that's a great place to be. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're looking at retirement, you know, if you say, I'm going to retire in 15 years, well, if you want to have a home paid off in that amount of time, right. then you might want to look heavily at the 15-year, mm-hmm. right? But if you're just starting out on your journey and you're in your 20s and this is your first home, you might want a little more flexibility to make room for that, that if you're planning on having children saving for college, you know, so it depends where you are in your life. Totally. Totally. Awesome. I appreciate all the information. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching today. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please put them down below. If you found any value in this, please, please hit the like button, share it and subscribe to our podcast. That's all I got. Thanks for joining us, Nick. Thank you, Joe. See you next time.